Today, I'm gonna to show you how to turn your expensive laser cutter into the ultimate die cutter for stickers, logos, pendants, and anything else you wanna make with the perfect cut. My name is Gil Posnanski and I'm passionate about making and laser cutters. If this is the first time you come to my channel, please hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon and if you really don't want to miss out on anything, make sure the bell icon is selected to all. Print and cut processes usually refer to the ability to print out a design on a printer and then have them automatically cut out with a plotter or laser machine. The secret to getting this to work is the registration marks that are printed alongside the graphic to align the machine when cutting out the design. Lightburn now has included the ability to print and cut within its software, therefore opening up a whole new realm of design and making for your laser cutter. In this real-time tutorial, I'm going to use my Emblazer 2 to cut out two different types of labels and get a perfect cut every time. The first step we need to do to make sure that we've got this process all worked out is we actually need to take some graphics and prepare them so that Lightburn can do a print and cut process on them. So I'm actually gonna use Photoshop, so let's open up Photoshop here, and I'm actually gonna create a brand new uh, file, but in this case, I'm actually gonna to go to the print because I know that I'm gonna print these things out at A4, and I've got myself a A4 sheet, and in this example, I'm actually gonna grab some graphics I got from the internet. I'm gonna show you how I prepare them using Lightburn so that we can actually process them the way we were discussing. And the great thing about this is, once you've done this once, you can print out the graphic sheets and then load them straight into Lightburn and then continue to print them out as many times as possible. So it's absolutely not a problem to, uh, to do this. Whether you want one set or 10,000 sets, once you've done this work, you are set to go. So let me go and grab some of my graphics. They are actually here in this folder. And I'm actually gonna go to, uh, to this sticker sheet. So I'm gonna drop that sticker sheet straight into Photoshop. And I'm also going to grab these graphics into Photoshop. So now that they're there, let's make this full screen. And let's get to work. Extra points if anyone can actually pick what these graphics are from. So these are some graphics that I found off the internet. Someone else prepared them. They're basically just a JPEG image. I'm going to select them all by hitting Command A, copy, bring them into the A4 sheet. There they go. They actually uh, don't really need to be resized too much because these stickers actually are designed for, for a physical thing in the world. I'm gonna leave them that size, uh, but the other graphics, the ones that I have here, I'm going to also select, copy, and bring in. But these ones I'm going to actually increase by hitting Command T to transform, and I'm going to size them up. And we'll size them this way. We'll just put them just here. So we've got two graphics on a sheet. This can be normal paper. This can be sticker paper. It depends on what you want to use. We've done pretty much almost everything we need to do in Photoshop except for one other thing. We need to put some registration points on this graphic. So to do so, I'm gonna grab another layer. Once I've accepted that transform, I'm gonna hit that extra layer. So what I like to do with this is I like to grab the triangle select on that new layer, and I like to make just a little graphic like this, so just a little line. I fill it in with black using the paintbrush, or actually the paint bucket. While I've got it selected, I'll copy it again. Com Command C, Command V gives me another copy by selecting it and moving it up. And again, hitting Command T, the transform tool is one of my favorites in Photoshop. I move it 90%, go back to, to the general selection and stick it in the middle. Now that is a big, big cross. So I'm not gonna use that. I'm gonna just quickly select both layers and merge them by Command E. What I now have is a big cross that I can move around. Again, transform. Let's move it down to a smaller, except that I now have a registration point that I can use in this graphic or anything else. And in fact, I like to use the same 
registration point for multiple graphics. So once you've done this once, don't go and make it over and over again. Just copy and paste it, which I love tricks like copying and pasting because simply it's just an easy way to be able to, to do things over and over again. So I used to tell my students, the greatest thing that a computer can do is just make multiple copies as quickly as possible. I am have selected it. Here he's moving around, which is fine. I'm going to select and copy and paste another copy. Perfect. So I'm going to move one of these squares just here. Now, and I'm going to take the other one and I'm going to move him up here. And in fact, looking at it, compared to the graphics, I know that they are really, really big. So in fact, I'm going to go a little bit smaller. And except that's much better. I'm going to grab this guy and just get rid of him. And I'm just going to copy him again. And you can see it's really quick. If you don't like it or you think it's too big, just help yourself by preparing it this way, first of all. Now, you can put these registration marks anywhere you like on the, on the sheet. I'm just putting them here because I'm just used to. You can actually use part of the image as your registration point if you want to. I prefer to put the marks there because if I give this file to anyone else to cut out, I want them to get be successful straight away. Now that I've got that done, the next step is just to save it as a JPEG. And I'm gonna do that really quickly by going into Photoshop, JPEG. I'm gonna call this sticker sheet. One, JPEG, save. I like to save it as at the maximum option for quality because it is something that I'm going to print out and then normally I will then go into Photoshop print I will pick it on my brother laser uh, printer unfortunately my color printer isn't working so I'm going to print these out in black and white for but for this purpose it won't really change hit print send it across I'm going to make one copy print proceed and it is now going to send that to my printer. Next step is to take this graphic and take it into Lightburn so we can prepare it within Lightburn and then send it to the laser cutter to actually cut these graphics out. So let's close this up. We'll save it. We'll save it as sticker sheet, as a PDF, PSD. And that's great because we, if we need to go in, they're all layered up, it's all ready to go. Let's go into Lightburn, which is one of my favorite layout pieces of software. I mean, I, I love Lightburn. It's really getting to a point where I'm surprised at what it can't do. And it just keeps getting refined. So if you've got a laser cutter or if you've got a CNC mill, this is definitely something to, to play with. I'm now importing my sticker sheet because it's A4 and because I'm using the Emblazer 2 from Darkly Labs, the area you can see, if I took a sheet in, it's going to go from one end to the other. So the first thing that I like to do is select it and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. That way I can put the sheet down either in the middle or anywhere else. I'm just gonna move it over here. It really doesn't matter in this purpose because we have those registration marks and you'll see in a really short time that you can have it anywhere in the machine and it will still work well. At this point, the next process I need to do is actually do a trace. So I'm going to trace. I need to select it first. Excuse me. I was wondering why trace didn't come up. There's trace image. And you can see in here, it's actually showing you. I don't know if I can zoom in. No, I can't. Everything that's purple is where the trace element comes in. Now, you may want to refine the trace. I don't bother with that. It's actually faster for me to be able to trace all the information that's on there and then remove what I don't need because what I do need is the borders around each image. So let's do that really quickly by hitting OK. Grab the, the JPEG, you see as, as I move it away, I can delete and what this leaves me with is the outline of all the details on those stickers. And what we really want is this. See this clear box with the lines around it? That, my friends, is actually what we need. We want the borders of each of these stickers. So you can sit here right now and say to yourself, Gil, that's a lot of stuff. We're gonna go in and pick each piece out. Hold, hold on, hold on. Let me show you a quick trick. And this is something that, that I love to do. 
This is actually something that, uh, this is one of the reasons why I don't think playing with the tracing, maybe missing out on some of the detail is, is not a problem. The fastest way I know to go and actually weed this graphic out, so we're, the only thing that we're stuck with happens to be the image, uh, sorry, the borders of the graphics that we need. Let me just move this back. You can see right now, this is actually grouped. Let's select it, ungroup it by going up here and ungrouping selection. And you'll see now they are individual pieces. I'm gonna zoom in to this sticker right here. Um, the way you select things within Lightburn is you can select them individually. You can hold down the shift key and select, and this is gonna take you a long time. Or you can do what they call a drag and pull. One of the great things about Lightburn is that if you drag and pull a whole area like this, anything that's not completely selected is not selected. So we've just selected all the text, hit delete, and it's done. You, we can also do that with some of the borders, but in this case, the borders are really tight. So I'm gonna select this border individually, delete, delete. We have the outer border. Let's try this again with a circle. This is gonna be easier because you can see on the left-hand side, I missed part of the circle. Delete, done. Let's go back out, let's look at the voltage. So here we go, select the areas we want to get rid of, and we're good to go. Let's zoom back out, I'm gonna hit the key here, so we, we homing. All right, let's look at this one. So this is a, a, a detailed label. In this case, I'm actually going to grab as much as I possibly can in one move, select it all, delete, we're good to go. Zoom out and zoom back in. I love it when it does that. Select, delete. One of the reasons I like doing this by hand is by weeding at this by hand itself, you can actually see if there's any problems. If you need to go in there and actually fix something up, see I actually moved one of those. This one's gonna be a little bit interesting. Yeah, no, I got it because it was so close to the border, but I was able to wipe that out. If you happen to come in here and the trace didn't work, you might have to repair the path. Otherwise you might not get a clean cut. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna come back here, zoom straight in. All right, let's try it again. See if I can get all of this in one shot. Okay, got the text, didn't get this nice border out. So I'm gonna select that border itself. And we've just done the first part of those stickers. Moving along to the graphics here. I'm actually thinking to myself, I might, oh, excuse me, I might have to uh, see if I can get all of this done at the same time. Bang, done. And you know what, if I happen to have, to have done, let's go back, if I had made a mistake, and if I had wiped out too much, you know what, Command Z, undo, take another shot at it. It's not a problem. And these are skills that the more you work with Lightburn, the faster you will get at working with the same, with, with the tools. Just, uh, it, it's a lot of fun once you know the fastest way to get the results you want. And here we are again. You can see, I don't know if anyone's timing me, but it doesn't take terribly long to have your graphic all set up that way. That, my friends, is all you need to do. Let's save this file as I like to put it, make a light burn folder. So light burn files. That way, if I ever need to come back and we call this sticker sheet. One, right? So everything, the graphic file, the, the JPEG, and now the Lightburn file is all ready to go. So let me go pick up the sheet from the printer and let's put it into the, the laser cutter and show you how this works. Okay, so here's the sticker sheet. You can see it's all printed out. I have my marks both here and here. And I'm gonna open up my laser cutter with lots, lots of noise. Here she is here coming in and I'm going to move it around. And you can see, I'm just putting it in the general area. 
All I need to do now is shut this down and line up the laser head with the actual print itself. So I'm going to, to actually arm the laser. And in this case, I actually get to arm the laser You're hitting that button. In the Emblazer 2, there's a trick where we can actually engage the laser and see a faint dot of where that beam will actually cut. And that's what we're gonna use to line up the points on the uh, print with the, the laser head in the laser cutter. So let's jump back into Lightburn and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So what I need to do now that I've got the graphic in the laser cutter is that I need to line up my laser head with the actual graphic marks on the printout. And with the Emblazer 2, this actually turns on the diode laser just slightly. So I can actually lower that uh, laser head just slightly. And when I move it across to the piece of paper, you'll actually see there's a slight dot. Let me just move it onto a white area. You can see that white dot. That white dot is the laser or the path of the laser. So I'm gonna use this to kind of cheat. If you've got a conventional CO2 laser, you might have a red uh, laser pointer that goes along the path. You can use that too. If you don't have a way of lining this up, this process is really difficult. So in doing so, I'm gonna go into Lightburn. And I'm just gonna jog the laser head across. It's a little bit out. You can see I'm, I'm gonna actually click straight onto the X and you can see it's really far out. So I'm going to just manually jog the laser head across. It's doing a nice big move. So I'm just going to move, bring that across a little bit. And all I'm going to do is line it up in the middle of the crosshairs and I can actually bring that down. It's, it's still not exactly where I want it to be. So I can actually refine that by changing, changing the distance. 0.1 of a mil movement and I want to get it like perfectly tight on that which it is right now now that I have the laser head exactly over that very first point I'm going to select that point and then I'm going to come up to tools come to print and cut and I'm going to set the first target position and you'll see that it has accepted that by going back to print and cut and you can see the little tick mark next to it, it means that first position is set. Great. The next thing I'm gonna do is select the second mark and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring the laser head across and you can see how far out it actually is. I'm going to raise that distance back to 10 so that we can do this a little bit faster. Let's move it down a little bit across. At this point, I'm just going to make that one mil so I can just dial it in, move it back up. I'm just going to take a quick look, see how it's looking. Yeah, it could use just a little bit of a jog. I like to be as perfect as possible. So I take a little bit of extra time, extra care. And at this point, we're going to go back to tools. We're going to Go back to print and cut. We're going to select the second target position. And if we go back to tools, you'll see that two things have happened. One is align output to targets has a tick next to it. If we come over here to the laser control panel, you'll see it says ready and print and cut mode. So we are ready to go. I always like to check, first of all, that it all is looking good. And it definitely looks good to me. The only thing we need to do now is just go into the cut layers, go into the library, grab the settings for a piece of paper because this is just a normal piece of paper. I'm going to go in, I'm going to grab the line, I'm going to line it to layer, go back into the laser, make sure it's armed, and then we should be good to go. And there you can see the laser is now cutting along the borders that we've actually defined. There's the first one. There's the second one. And again, we've matched the graphic in Lightburn to the graphic we actually printed out on the piece of paper.
This is really cool. You can use this for stickers. I'm actually really excited to design my own stickers with some sticker paper. And I actually want to play with this where I can actually score the sticker out and then make a, a larger border so that I can cut them all up and send them to people. It saves a lot of money if you, if you want to do it yourself. You can use this for pendants, as I was saying. Any sort of graphic you need where you need an exact border cut out. And in fact, I did something similar by making some badges earlier this year, or actually at the end of last year. And my problem I had was I couldn't align the outer cutting area perfectly like it is doing here. So I'm gonna actually show you guys that project and I'm gonna actually work through that project using the very same process. See, it's now moved on to the bigger stickers, bigger graphics. And you can see it's actually even indenting your mark. So if you don't want your registration mark cut out at all, uh, I don't have a problem with it, but just put it onto to another layer. But you can see here, it's actually doing that whole process. What I like about this graphic as well is that it's a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes. So you're actually able to use a whole bunch of different uh, generic shapes. You don't have to stay with, let's just to say rectangles or, you, or circles. You can use whatever shape you want, whether it's something that you make that's generic or something that you make as a once off. And that's kind of a really cool feature because if you had a die cutter, you would only be able to use the same shape over and over again. It gives a lot of flexibility in this process. I'll just speed it up so that you guys can see this in double time. I'm sure you guys got a good idea of how this process goes. Coming out of that final graphic. Oh, it's actually the marker and then that final graphic. Okay, so let's open up the laser cutter and see what we've got in here. So if I turn this graphic around, you can actually see, it's not even gonna let me do that. And all these pieces are gonna clearly come off. So we actually have the weeded area, and then we actually have here, we have all the graphics. And if I hold that one up, you can see exactly where that border is cut out. I'm gonna put that one in there. Same thing that I have here. So I have all the graphics cut out. Here's another one. Here's another one and so forth. If I move over here, you can see these graphics, there's a little bit of a border just on, on one side. That actually probably comes into play with the actual tracing. If I was going to recut these, I would actually just jog that little piece over, but you can see, unless you, you really wanted exact tight lines, we've got those tight lines over here. Here, you just need to play with them a bit. And that, is an incredibly successful print and cut. All the graphics and then the actual layout sheet matched to what we were using in Lightburn. Well, that's it. You can now use the print and cut feature of Lightburn to cut out perfect pieces every time. If you've enjoyed this tutorial, 
and don't want to miss out on any other projects using technology or laser cutters, please subscribe and hit the bell icon before you head over to some of these, these videos right here and so you can continue your maker journey. I'm looking forward to seeing you real soon.